mostly everything that's happened in the in Big East basketball from the end of the season to now. Let's go. Luan Pipkins commits to Providence. The U UMass grad transfer was a 20-point scorer two years ago. He's also a point guard. Providence's two biggest needs from last year, scoring, which they struggled with. They were the, uh, the Big East's worst offense, according to Ken Palm. And point guard play, which they did not get consistent, consistently good point guard play last year. I mean, they were the Big East's best defense in Ken Palm. Worst offense, addressing their needs here. A uh, really nice pickup for Ed Cooley. He'll join David Duke, A.J. Reeves, and Malik White in that backcourt around Nate Watson and Alpha Diallo inside, assuming Diallo's back. We'll touch on that later. But um, real nice pickup for Ed Cooley. Uh, Big East, Big 12 uh, challenge. Uh, Matchups were announced uh, recently. Four of them are returning games from last year's schedule. You got uh, Marquette. Kansas State, Kansas State played at Marquette in uh, one of those huge Marcus Howard games. So Marquette will go to Kansas State next year. Uh, Texas is coming to Providence. Kansas is coming to Villanova. And Oklahoma is coming to Creighton. Those are uh, all games from last year. So not you know not, not too many interesting uh, matchups this year. Of course, that will, of course, change in the coming years. Of course, all those are all four really good games. Uh, a couple other ones to watch out. Yeah, Seen Hall and Iowa State. Iowa State's you know been very good, pretty very very good team in these last few years. Seen Hall's big things on the way next year. Uh, you know, anticipating big things at least. Then uh, national runner-up Texas Tech will play DePaul. And uh, and then you got St. John's West Virginia, which didn't seem like a yeah, interesting of a matchup, but now that Mike Anderson's at St. John's. Obviously, press Virginia, two up-tempo pressing teams should be that should be a fun one as well. Uh, and if you know, you got what we thought was going to be the biggest departure from the conference at the time, and Shamori Pons declared for the draft. I mean, I, I think right now he is an NBA scorer. Now, I'm not sure if he's an NBA player right now. He he doesn't have that decision making and in control. You know, part of his game. He's a, he was he's always a little out of control, not the best decision maker. I think he's an NBA scorer. I think he's an NBA player down the line. And you know, with uh, the way that things have been going with the draft, a lot more second round draft picks getting guaranteed money. You know, as long as you are draft or you can at least get a two way deal uh, after the draft, there's still great opportunity here. I'm not. I mean, it would have been. I mean. I don't know if he's ready to play right away, but I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to like to be one of those people that say he should have stayed. You know, he, he can obviously improve while playing in the NBA, the G League, or whatever. Then you got a group of group of transfers. We got Joey Brunk, uh, Drew Edwards, two uh, grad transfers. Brunk's going to Indiana. Haven't heard anything about Drew Edwards yet. Uh, Samson Froling from Creighton's going to play in Australia. Uh, Keontae Kennedy. From Xavier, Gerald uh, uh, Gillen's Butler from Butler. They'll both transfer to uh, lesser guys. Froling is going to try to play professionally in Australia. So not, you know, nothing too, uh, nothing of too much consequence there. Two bigger ones were Makayash and Langford. Uh, high, pretty highly touted recruit. Didn't really work at Providence, you know, in the two years. And he was playing now, you know, now playing probably the fifth, the fifth wheel there in that backcourt, you know, playing behind two very talented sophomores, guys that are a year below him. Not not that too not too surprising that he's transferring. Uh Quinterly never really fit at Villanova. Contrasting styles with Jay Wright. I was always a I was a little surprised that he did wind up transferring just because of the success Jay's had recently. I felt like even with the contrasting styles they could have made made it work, you know, talent always seems to win out in the end. But those are two pretty highly uh, touted guys at a high school, both leaving the conference. Miles Powell declared for the draft. Most likely will be back. There's really no downside to declaring, especially you know now more than ever with with uh, the NCAA allowing uh, you to hire an agent. You know there's some uh, restrictions on that. But 
there's no downside there. And it's a good move for Powell. I think he'll be back. Uh, the Athletic did a poll of college basketball players. Uh, Jay Wright, Marcus Howard, and Miles Powell were all had some uh, mention there. Powell was uh, received some votes for most underrated. They had released the top three, and then the rest were all received votes. So Powell got some received votes for under, most underrated. Howard finished third, I believe, in uh, best uh, college basketball player. So that's not bad. And then Jay Wright uh for a uh, coach you must most want to play for i believe he got uh received votes for that so you know it's good to get recognition from inside you know these are the these are the guys that are playing the games and it's I mean, obviously great for Villanova the J is thought highly amongst players you know and obviously reflected in this year's recruiting class but we'll get to that a little later too uh Providence will play in Maui in 2020 so not next year but the year after that so uh, there's some distant news. Uh, UNC is going to be there, Texas, Alabama, Indiana. It's always a great field. Uh, obviously, Duke and Gonzaga were in it last year. Of course, Xavier was too. That uh, wasn't a great time. Uh, Justin Simon was a finalist for the Le uh, Leftry Dizel Award for the nation's top defender. Uh, Marcus Zagorowski, James Akinjo were also finalists for the uh, Kyle uh, Macy Award for the top freshman. Those are uh, 25 finalists for those two awards. And no surprise here. All three guys very deserving. Uh, Kevin Moore was a favorite, or uh, reportedly a favorite for the Virginia Tech job, which he, of course, withdrew from. Great win for Seen Hall. Great win for the Big East. And, yep. Uh, then Matt Abdel Massey. Uh, I was St. John's assistant, their top recruiter there. He goes back with Fred Hoiberg. He goes to Nebraska this time. Then there's shortly after that, uh, Cam Mack reopens his recruitment. He was looking like St. John's point guard for next year. And this was obviously just the beginning for St. John's. Um, shortly after that, Mike Craig announced that Mullen uh, was their coach. So that's uh, something you usually see among healthy programs, and that was among a, a slew of rumors at that time, which turned out to be true eventually, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, the Big East was in at that three-on-three -three tournament of uh, seniors, and I think they, they lost in the round robin uh, part of it. They didn't make the tournament, which was not too surprising, and I think it kind of just showed again that you know, this conference didn't really have senior talent this year. I mean, Phil Booth and Eric Pascal were not involved. Uh, Jesse Govan uh, was at uh, Portsmouth. Uh, wasn't involved in this either. And then you take uh, the Paul Sr., Struce, uh, Kane, and Lujabi. So really you just knock off some of those top seniors, and they were kind of just letting you left with Nate Fowler, uh, Paul Jorgensen, Isaiah Jackson, Marvin Clark. So I think no surprise they didn't make it very far, but... Uh, yeah, I think that just goes to show again how uh, the talent in this conference was at the uh, was in the younger guys. I think we're going to see that next year and in the coming years. So we'll get to the Mullen, uh, the Mullen uh, yeah, story. So Mullen does eventually step down as the head coach of St. John's, which uh, I know there was some off. Uh, court uh, personal stuff from Mullen that was of course very serious and you know, understanding for him but just looking at this at the basketball aspect it, it is kind of no surprise that this happened uh, you know it's kind of a matter of when not if he never he never really seemed obviously all in he didn't take much to notice that you know just watching uh, Greg St. Jean uh, coach in the huddles <laughs> inside the huddle with Chris Mullen was uh bit of an overstatement from uh, FS1 but uh, so then of course now this is when all the drama erupts uh, Bobby Hurley is the favorite of course Mike Craig of the Duke ties he was at Duke for 30 some odd years of course Hurley from Duke uh, from the area Northeast guy he turns down St. John's for whatever reason um, then uh, then it seems like Tim Kloos 
uh, from Iona is the favorite. Uh, played at St. John for a couple of years. From Queens, it was reportedly his dream job. But they wound up offering the job to Porter Moser uh, of Loyola Chicago. And then, of course, he rejects them, which, given his situation as a you know Midwest Chicago guy, family, just bought a new house uh, in Chicago, not totally surprising that he rejected them. Head scratching that they even offered him. Then, of course, Kloos takes his name out of the running. Amidst all this, you have uh, the Rapoli 20-minute uh, rant, rant um, like Francesa. He really trashes the entire university in addition to uh, just the athletics and basketball programming. You know, he said, had good things to say about Mike Craig, but but that wasn't, wasn't a good look for them. Uh, then you have... Uh, Ryan Odom of UMBC doesn't want to doesn't uh, even want to talk with St. John's. That's you know the UMBC coach. Uh, so now that now they seem to be going down and down down the list. Like who who are we gonna get? We can't even talk. We can't even talk to the UMBC coach. So it looks at this point it looks bleak, but I think they turned it around very nicely. With Mike Anderson uh, from Arkansas, where they wound up hiring, um, and he's a success everywhere he's been. He started uh, was an assistant with Nolan, Nolan Richardson, in you know the forty minutes of hell in Arkansas, um, where you know he draws a lot of his uh, influence, play style, pressing, up tempo, running gun. But he went to he was a head coach at UAB. Where he built built up that program, went to a Sweet 16 with them. Um, I think in his second year, he's been to Sweet 16 twice. He went to the Elite Eight with Missouri, who he coached after UAB, and then he went back to Arkansas as the head coach after Missouri. Um, you know, a fun up tempo style. He seems like a real good guy. He had some nice one liners at the press conference. I'm I'm excited for this. I. I I'm excited for this hire. I'm excited to see excited to see them play next year. I mean, it's you know it's from what they had last year uh, in terms of how they played compared to now what looking like this year. I think the one thing you, that you're, you're guaranteed to get from this a Mike Anderson team is a team that's going to play hard, which I think you know you didn't always get last year. So that's I think something to look forward to, and. And I, you know, I think, I think, I think he, he can make them a, a good, good team. He doesn't have, I mean, the, it was, you know, it's obviously surprising because he's coached in the South his whole life, his whole coaching life. So the, you know, the obviously the connections, recruiting and whatnot, but that that doesn't worry me. I think, I think he can be successful at St. John's. Certainly hope he will be. Uh, Jesse Govan and Trey Morning both were at the Portsmouth Invitational. Uh, eight teams of eight seniors each. You know, good uh, to get some uh, pro looks uh, there. So good for uh, those two. Uh, Michael Enzi was named to the Division One AAA ADA Scholar Athlete list. Uh, he's one of ten uh, honorees from uh, non-football schools, and there were you know a certain uh, degree of athletic and academic uh, qualification you need to meet so you know it's always good to see uh, one of our guys from the Big East doing well both on the court and in the classroom uh, Creighton was seventh in average attendance last year according to their sports information director Rob Anderson shared that on Twitter this that's their eighth straight year in the top ten that's uh, you know that's obviously a great selling point. They always uh, fill fill up that arena in Omaha. So good that they uh, were in the top ten again. Uh, and then you got four of the four Xavier guys: Najee Marshall, Quinn Gooden, Paul Scruggs, Tyreek Jones, all entered the draft. Uh, they should they should all be back. But you know, as I you know, same thing with Powell. The draft is really more accessible now than ever. You know, you go, you get your feedback, and you can come back. There's, you know, that's uh, that's been talked about a lot. Uh, so, assume those all, those guys will be back. Marcus Howard is also back, and he um, didn't even 
Um, he won't even declare for the draft, which is, I think, a little surprising. But not surprising. I'm not too surprised that he's back, considering um, how, you know, the slew of factors. One, you know, he is, excuse me, one, he's like an, he's an undersized point guard. He doesn't really have great point guard skills. He's obviously great, I mean, a great scorer, shooter, creating his own shot. Does uh, really well there, but he he doesn't have the point guard skills. He's a bit undersized. He's also young because he entered he uh, went to Marquette a little younger than he joined the, about a year earlier. And then also to impact onto that is how Marquette's season ended. Uh, they ended of course one and six. They just beat the St. John's in that uh, their first Big East game was the quarterfinal. And then also his wrist injury. I think another I think another big factor. Just for his pro potential, going into the draft was that in-state tournament game. That you know that uh, Mark uh, Mur Murray State Marquette matchup was kind of built. The hype was built around um, John ja Morant versus Marcus Howard. You know, two you know big time, uh, big time point guards, both with pro aspirations. And you, you, you kind of want to see them to go go back and forth a little bit. Obviously, Howard wasn't going to cover John ja Morant or anything like that, but. But they, I mean, they obviously just got destroyed in that game. And, I mean, the team as a whole, Howard didn't have a great game either. He wound up just taking a bunch of shots and that um, not, wasn't very efficient and it wasn't very impressive. I'm thinking that. So that head-to-head -head matchup versus another pro prospect on a bigger stage in the tournament, that doesn't help you either. So no surprise that he's back. Um, Chris Archidiakono. Uh, committed to Villanova, which is, of course, it's fun to have another, another Archie Diakono at Villanova. Um, you know, he's not, he wasn't as, not as highly thought of as Ryan out of high school, but he's a, he's a fifth year guy, so he should be able, fifth year high school guy, should be able to have some type of impact, hopefully next year. This team does need guards, point guards in particular. Uh, Colin Gillespie is like the only point guard, and, you know, how much, I mean, ideal world, he wouldn't even be playing. He's more of an off guard. But it, uh, he joins Ant uh, Brian Antoine and um, Justin Moore, the two freshmen coming in, and Gillespie. So now they have those four at least. I think they're now up to 11 guys, an 11 scholarship scholarship guys on the roster next year. So they still have space to add a grad a grad transfer point guard. We'll see what see what Jay winds up doing. But this is a nice get, and obviously. A fun add to the roster. Uh, then r shortly after the Marcus Howard news, we get the Housers news that they are transferring. Some rumors that there was some type of beef between them, the Howard and the, the two brothers. But, you know, this was surprising. This was really a consensus top 5 to 10 team, and they uh, decided to leave uh, the year before. Obviously, Sam... You know, you don't see a lot of guys transfer their last year, you know, from a you know a high major contender. So that was obviously very surprising. You know, that definitely knocks Marquette down a peg. Uh, they were looking like Big East favorites, and you know maybe you know potential maybe Final Four run, but um, definitely changes dynamic of that team. Especially be losing two of their top three shooters. I think, uh, Wojo's teams have been built around shooting. I think last year's team was more complete, that can defend and you know not so one-dimensional shooting. But now this team doesn't. Have, next year's team, as of right now, doesn't have a ton of shooting on it. I think it, that's just something uh, interesting to think about there. Um, and you know this does knock the conference down a little bit. They're not. I mean, they. I think. I think Villanova. I mean, Villanova and Seton Hall. I think can both be really good, if not, you know, elite next year. But um. But this, you know. This knocks the conference down a bit, taking that elite team, knocking them down. Uh. So after that, our Big East time Twitter poll. Uh, follow at Big East time RTT on Twitter. I uh, did a poll for the new, uh, the biggest favorite post Hauser transfer news, and Seton Hall was the favorite, 64%. Don't know about at 27. 
I uh, l- largely agree with this. I think seeing with what Seen Hall returns, this is assumed assumes Powell, Powell is back. With what they return, um, I think they should be the favorite. I think Villanova's got maybe the biggest range of, because there's so many unknowns with them, but there's a ton of young talent on that team. I think they both should be really good. They were in the final last year together, and they wouldn't be surprised if, if that was the matchup again. And we got Creighton is playing in the Las Vegas Invitational. They'll play Iowa in the first round. Uh, Iowa was a good team last year. I mean, I don't, not haven't looked too much into them next year, but I assume they should be pretty good again. Uh, San Diego State, Texas Tech, also in that uh, matchup, in that uh, Invitational Tournament. Well, obviously nice to get some good non-conference games. Uh, Alpha, Dia- uh, Alpha Diallo declares for the draft. Same deal, I think, as the Xavier guys. Um, there's no downside to committing, uh, declaring he should be back. He, I think he could be an NBA player down the line with uh, his rebounding, toughness, what he brings. He, I mean, he was, he's a good scorer. He, he became a better, much, better, much better shooter last year. There's still room to improve for him. Uh, I don't think he would get drafted if he declared. I think he'll be back. Uh, to call Molson committed to Seton Hall from Canisius. Sit one, play two, transfer. Real nice pickup uh, on the wing for Kevin Willard. And assuming Powell is back next year, this should help each help replace some of his production on the wing uh, in 2020, 2021. Uh, Xavier gets a couple grad transfers. Bryce Moore, Jason Carter. Carter's from Ohio. He should be, he should be their fifth starter, and he's eligible right away, and he has two years left of eligibility. Bryce Moore, just a one-year, much be more of a role guy, uh, you know, and a, and a good shooter. I think he shot near uh, close to 40% from three last year and about, you know, five a game. So, uh, they, I mean, they always need shooting around uh, those four guys, and especially with this team that doesn't shoot very well. They are losing their best shooter in Ryan Wellage. So they bring in Bryce Moore, Jason Carter, uh, you know, Xavier's, Looking like they could be a good, very good team next year, especially with how they end it this year and what they bring back uh, for next year. ESPN finalized their 2019 recruiting rankings. So we got nine of the 100 uh, committed to Big East schools, uh, four in the loaded Villanova class, and the top two, Jeremiah Robinson, Earl, Brian Antoine, both going to Nova. Those are the top two Big East. Um, DePaul with two, Romeo Weems and Marquise Jacobs. Great for them. You know, it's nice. It's a yeah, pretty, pretty representation in this top 100. Of course, there's so many different uh, avenues to acquire talent, especially now with transfers, you know, uh, junior college guys, uh, fifth-year high school guys, um, and, you know, uh, grad transfers. You know, but it's nice to get some recognition here. Uh, Charlie Moore commits to DePaul. Uh, played with at Cal his freshman year. Played at Kansas last year. Um, he was a former top 100 guy, and he joins you know a really talented group coming to DePaul next year, of both transfers and uh, high school seniors. And he, I believe, he's trying to get a hardship waiver um, to play next year. I mean, I mean, this is a nice, nice trend for DePaul. Funny to say. I mean, they still finished last uh, last year, of course, uh, for tradition's sake. But sooner rather than later, they'll be climbing up. And they were obviously a much better team last year than they were uh, in years past. Like, you know, just the bottom half of the conference as a whole was elevated last year. And then, you know, tiebreakers, DePaul won's best 10 seed. So... Um, and finally, we got Cole Anthony uh, makes his decision. He's going to UNC. He is not going to Georgetown. We're obviously, would have shifted a lot, a lot of it in the conference. That's not going to happen. He's going to UNC. This has been Big East time. If you like the video, give it a like. 
subscribe for more Big East basketball, whatever. Um, in the future, thanks for watching, and I'm out.